Hello, everyone. My name is Jacob Rockwall. I'm a librarian at the Buffalo Central Library, and I'm pleased to be able to offer this presentation to you today called Resume and Cover Letter Fundamentals. In this workshop, we will go over some of the basic and important elements that each resume and cover letter should have. And then we will go over some of the templates available online to create your own resume to get noticed on the job market. So first let's talk about why a resume. Well, a resume is basically a document where you can showcase your skills to your prospective employers. Um, it gives you an opportunity to demonstrate how your skills or accomplishments can help your employer to, and make you a better employee, an asset to them. So some resume basics, you want to, sh uh, to make sure that your resume is brief. Um, one, two, pa two pages is ideal. And the reason this is, is because research has shown that hiring managers tend to only spend six seconds per resume. So what you put on that, on that resume needs to jump out at the employer to get you noticed. So first we'll start with the fonts. You should go with Arial or Times New Roman. Those are the standard fonts and are best for a resume type of document. Um, there are many other artistic fonts. I gave you some examples here, Curls, Chiller, Signa, New Times, Old English Text. Those are fun and they probably make great posters, but it doesn't give you a good, um, it doesn't present a good professional look to the prospective employer. Additionally, font size should be between 10 to 12 points. I recommend 12, it makes it bigger. Um, helps the, per, the person reading the resume, uh, read it better, and it, it makes your resume look a bit fresh. So when you start your job search, you're going to be looking um, at job postings, and I recommend that you always read the posting. Don't just jump at it because the uh, job description sounds great and something you might be looking for. You should read the posting to ensure that what you're applying for is something that you actually want to do. But in reading this posting, you will also be able to see what they're looking for. And uh, you can use some of their own language in the job posting to enhance your resume as well. So this is a posting uh, a excerpt I took from a job posting for Geico. They're looking for a customer service representative. And you know some of the uh, language here is something you can use to boost your resume, such as they're looking for somebody who can provide outstanding customer service by showcasing expertise, fostering trust, and growing customer satisfaction. You can tailor these phrases and include them in your resume, and it will show the job um, people that it, you may be what they're actually looking for. You want to also highlight relevant information, such as eliminating jobs you may have had 10 years ago, or minor achievements that aren't key to what you're doing today. I can tell you in my uh, history of working for the last 15, 16 years, I had many positions, um, many part-time positions as a teenager, as most teenagers do. And it wouldn't be helpful to me to highlight this information on my resume now. Like I was once a parking attendant at the Erie County Fair that's not going to be very helpful in the library field, for instance. So let's say you're looking for a construction job and you have a history working in retail. That might not be a transferable skill that you want to include in your resume. You want to also use active language, such as words like achieved, earned, completed, or accomplished. But you want to make sure that you keep your sentences short and concise. And here's an example from a job description um, on a resume that I've seen. Uh, as an example, it said, during my time at 123 Corp, I ran multiple team-based team projects and helped each team member with various tasks associated with each project with efficiency. So it's good and it sounds, it sounds good. You could shorten it and make it sound a bit better, such as, I led multiple team-based projects and effectively coordinated group tasks. It's a bit more concise and it sounds better. 
Uh, and then you could also consider if you have a lot of achievements, instead of just including them under your job experience, you could create an experience section on your resume. And um, such as examples where, let's say you worked for this, in this person's case, solicited orders and promoted pro products to current customers resulting in a 25% increase in upgrade sales over two years. So these are, if some, you did something that caused a big effect at your place of work, it might be a good place to include it on your resume. Then we go into a cover letter. Well, why a cover letter? Well, it introduces you essentially to your prospective employer. It's summer, you, in your cover letter, you're going to summarize your professional experience even more than you did on your resume. You're just going to highlight and share what you as a prospective employer can help this company succeed with. So some basics, you want to include a header. And I gave an example here. You always want to have your name, address, phone, email address on top. Then you give it a couple of spaces. You want to always put the date. And then you want to address the prospective employer. And then you start with dear, for in, in this case, it was dear Miss Susan HR. Um, so you always wanna make sure that your formatting looks crisp and you're leaving enough spacing. Um, so another thing, some proper formatting for cover letters, you want it to be no more than one page, and it should generally consist of three paragraphs. And you want to make sure everything is left aligned, like we just had on here. Let's, let's see. Uh, everything is left aligned on the page, um, except for the header, which is your name, obviously. Um, and you want to include include one inch margins on every side of the letter and make sure that you're, you're using the same fonts, spacing, um, font size as your resume. You want it to be almost identical in format. Um, like I just said, you open with a simple salutation, dear John Smith. And it's always recommended that you include the entire name of the person if you know it. Um, so you, for instance, you want to use Mr., Ms., or Doctor if you know that, or it's sometimes just better to include the whole first name and last name. And if you don't know the name of the person, um, just address it to HR manager. So in the first part, paragraph, you're going to introduce yourself and you're going to include a brief overview of your professional experience and share experience that you uh, bring to the company. Um, in paragraph two, you're going to go over the details of the job description. And this is where you're going to pluck out uh, where you can align with the things that they listed on their job posting. And you want to demonstrate in your cover letter how you did this. So you're going to take experiences from your job or duties from your job and compare that to what you'll be doing at this new job and show where you line up with what they're looking for. Um, and you also might want to include why you're interested in the company. And if you don't have a ton of experience in the area, discuss why you're willing to take on a new challenge. So if it's a job that you have minimal or little or none experience, um, you could just highlight why you are a good fit because you're looking for a new experience or a new challenge in your job career. And then on paragraph three, you're going to want to include a powerful closing and you end with a complimentary note, and then sincerely, yours truly, your best regards. So here's an example. I believe that my education, skills, and experiences fit your requirements. I look forward to an opportunity to interview for this position. Sincerely, John Smith. So that's kind of what you want. You want your to be brief, but make it clear that how that you uh, make it clear that you're interested and you want to interview for this position. Um, you could certainly create a template or cover letter on any word processing document, and I'll show you a couple in a minute. There are a number of templates available online. On, Indeed has a number of resume and cover letters you can find there. Canva also has a nice selection of really nicely formatted resumes. You could certainly go there. Um, 
and check it out. But today we're going to show you Microsoft Office and Google Docs and uh, look at their templates that they have available. All right, so now we're going to take a look at Microsoft Word and what we can do on this. This is available at any of our libraries. Uh, if you have it at home, you could certainly do this as well. So all we're going to do is go to File and New. And under this, um, we have a number of different templates that you can do on Microsoft Word, whether you're creating a brochure, our calendar, but today we're going to be looking at resumes and cover letters. And we can type either type in here, resume and cover letter, or we can click on the little button that's here. And it's going to bring us to the templates that are available. So first, um, we could certainly, it depends how creative we want to get with it or how basic we want to get with it. We've got some pretty basic ones once we get down here, but we're going to go with this one. I like this one a lot, it's pretty clean. And then all we do is press the button to create. Once we hit the create button, it's going to open us up into a new Word document where um, we just basically enter our information. So as you can see here, first name, last name, um, I use my User. You would enter your address, phone number, email. If you want to include your other social media, you can. I would definitely just include the email though. And then basically we go down to experience, education, enter any skills that we might bring to the job. And then if we don't, but if there's something we don't want to include, we can just erase it. Or if there's something we want to include, we can add it. Um, so remember earlier we talked about adding accomplishments. And let's see, make this a little bit bigger. Bold, black. And, you know, we can add them below. And let's see, that's Georgia. So we want to make sure we have the same fonts as well. And there we go. And we can enter our skills here as well. And the same is true for creating a cover letter. So let's head over now and take a look at what our templates are for cover letters. All right, so we're back. We go back to our home screen for Microsoft Word. And we do the same in reverse. We go to File, New, and then Resume and Cover Letters. And like I said, we want to keep the format the same as our resume. Well, it looks like we have a similar one right here. So do the same as we did before, click on it and create. And here we are, um, it opens up into this page. And like I said before, first name, last name, you enter all your information, then you enter the company's information, and then you continue with your three paragraphs of information here as well. So as you can see, it's pretty simple and um, makes it much easier for you rather than creating from scratch. Lets you know where to put things and it formats it for you. Um, but we could do something very similar with Microsoft, or I'm sorry, with Google Docs. And we'll go take a look at that right now. And now we're going to go take a look at Google Docs. All right, so basically if you have a Gmail account, um, this is a great resource for you. If you don't have a Gmail account, it's also very, very simple to sign up for. Um, but I happen to have one. So I'm going to click on my username to log in. And then once we get into our Gmail account, we're going to go to the upper right corner for the Google Apps. And we're going to scroll down to Docs. And we'll click on the Docs. And here basically we've got a number of templates available. And right here at the top, we've got resume. But um, we could also type in resume here. 
we'll just go ahead and click on it. And much like um, on our Microsoft Word template, here is our resume. And much like before, we could just you know erase our names. You could enter your address here. And if there's something you don't want to include, like perhaps, actually not perhaps, in truth, I only speak English. So what's the point of including a languages on my resume when I can only speak English anyway? So it's not something to highlight because um, everyone, almost everyone in the job market is going to speak English. So it's not, doesn't make me unique in any way. Um, perhaps I didn't receive awards in any area. So I'm going to erase that. And but perhaps have a lot of skills I want to highlight. Um, then you would put your job experience here, your education, any special projects you might have been on. All right, so that's the resume. Like I said, it's very easy. You just put, put in your information and you're pretty much ready to go. Let's go back and find a cover letter. And here we go. We've got a good one right here. And much like before, you enter your information, um, the date, three paragraphs on why you're good, and your name essentially. So these are templates that are very easy to access, and you can set up a resume and a cover letter almost instantly. So we would like to thank you for again for joining us today and I want to make it known that we are here to help if there's anything we can do to help you find uh, what you're looking for to get you in the job market or to improve your situation in the job market we'd be happy to be there for you. We offer at the library book a librarian sessions where we could help you um, search for information on job searching resume help. Um, we're here to help basically you name the topic and we'll find a way to assist you with it. We also offer one hour book to technology trainer sessions that can help you with your computer skills if you have difficulty, um, perhaps, you know, with typing skills or um, using a certain program, computer basics, we do a lot of that here. And we also, of course, have tons of books on creating resumes, job search, interviews, and much, much more. So you just need a library card. When you come in here, we can set you up with a library card. It's a simple application. You can call us at any time at 858-8900 or go to buffalolib.org to see what's going on at the library. Thank you for joining us again and good luck with your job search and we'll see you next time at the Buffalo and Murray County Public Library.